from Billingham down to Camborne, National League Rugby covers the length and breadth of the country. But one of the most unique trips of all is here to the island of Guernsey. With a population of approximately 64,000, visitors are often fascinated by the tales of the island's past. But when it comes to rugby, Guernsey have been part of the National League story since returning in 2020. I think one of the biggest lessons that we, we found out the first time was how quick the transitional phase was. Make a mistake, team score. Um, we took that back into to National 3 and when we came back up, we've used that as a weapon too. And I just think that's the style of rugby, but you know, we've always had a decent enough park and, um, uh, and our game planning has always been there. But it's those little, small little details that we're missing. But the transition we made um, post National 3 to come up, I thought we were playing National 2 rugby while we were in National 3. That's the difference, and I do strongly believe this is the level that we should be at. Um, you know, we, we understand that certain teams have ambition to get promoted in that. For us, we're just trying to get into that top six. That's our ultimate goal. It'll be one of the best finishes that we, we can we can have as a, as a club, um, and something that I think is achievable, whether it's this year or next year. This is Guernsey's third consecutive season at level four. About the 80 minutes and playing on a Saturday is special for the Raiders. The club is far more than just that. Absolutely. I mean, we're over 100 years old as a rugby club, so we've got a really strong history and a, a really good community culture around our club. Um, you know, we've got so many volunteers and committee members and players and uh, parents and partners that give, give their time to help out the club. Um, and you know, we all know that community clubs don't work without people sort of getting, getting involved in volunteering. And we've also got a really strong uh, ladies team coming through at the moment. It's been an interesting time for us. I think we've been around for about 12 years or so as a ladies team now. Um, and so there's been um, sort of the stalwarts that sort of laid the foundation and, and, and grew uh, the team uh, and the popularity of the sport for the girls. Um, and then now sort of um, with some of them retiring and, and moving on, uh, we've got a really young um, team and we're just sort of finding their way at the moment. Um, last season we had six under 18 girls signed off to play and this season I think we've already had another two or three so it's really good to see the girls coming through the academy and then sticking with it and training so hard and doing their strength and conditioning to then get signed off to play adult rugby. If you go back to, to, to the past there's been two separate clubs on the island and um, we didn't really have a second team for, for long periods because if you need a second team you need competition. There used to be competition against Jersey, uh, there was about three or four teams but it just wasn't enough. Around six years ago we, we decided to amalgamate both both clubs into one, uh, which we have done. Um, this has given us a player base that's far, far out, out seeing what we what we even thought. So it used to be a day when we'd have 20 guys turn up to training, now we've got around 60. The two clubs are now together, which is fantastic. We've got the Vikings playing as our second team now um, in the England, English league system. And if, you're, if you want to sustain yourself at national leagues, uh, national three, or even London one, you can't do it off the base of not having a strong second team. I, mean, I moved there about 12 years ago. Um, we had a little clubhouse over there, which, which is now a training field, and it's, it's actually now a nursery. Um, that was like your traditional traditional rugby club. Um, like now, is the, the facilities here are, are amazing. You know, we've got um, great gym, great stadium. Um, everything around is, is amazing, which, which obviously shows the support as well we get from the community is amazing. Um, it's been like no other. I mean, obviously, I was, I was playing in the UK. Um, so there's a lot of things which, which is a lot different from the UK to over here. Like even as a collective, as like a group of players, like you know, you tend you tend to have little cliques of groups of players that come and go and stuff like that. We we tend to do a lot of things together as a rugby team, which is creates a massive bond and, and great friendship between players. So. It's obviously that's that's one of the main things we love rugby and then playing it with your friends is an absolute bonus as well. There's um, some really good, good growth in the sport and you know the academy obviously lays the foundations for yeah. that. But not only that is the importance of our, of our rugby development officer uh, and the community rugby coaches that are out in the schools. They're out in pretty much every school in Guernsey at some point throughout the school year, um, which gives kids the exposure to rugby and then might give them the, the encouragement to head down to the academy and actually get into regular playing. That all-encompassing and community feel around Guernsey was recently encapsulated by the club's signing of Dan Barnes, who was one of many to lose their job following the sad demise of rivals in Jersey Reds. The whole month has been crazy. As I said, the uh, last few weeks, I didn't know how to think or feel, but you know now it's sort of sinking in about everything that's happened, seeing all the boys move on to other clubs, um, moving out the house, things like that. So uh, everything's come a bit more real now. Um, obviously been a tough time. Uh, you know, there's no, there's no hiding that. Um, but now it's sort of uh, sort of trying to move on a little bit and trying to not forget it. All the memories always last, but always keep moving forward, never backwards. So everyone here has been so welcoming. And as soon as I've come over, 
Um, you know, between uh, Jersey and Guernsey, there is obviously that big rivalry, but, you know, me playing at the Reds, I, I never really sat into that. I haven't, you know, I wasn't born and raised. I haven't always watched or been around the Siam. So I think there's only been three or four in my time. Um, so that, that sort of rivalry isn't, isn't really, doesn't really affect me as, as I come, but it means I can stay at home, still be in Jersey, and then uh, come out and play for Guernsey. And, you know, I've, I've played against Guernsey a fair few times as well. So I know what it's about. Um, keeps me playing as well, as I said before. I hate not playing, so um, it just it just keeps me playing. Uh, you know, I love the games. Dan's, um, Dan's a really nice guy who just wants to play rugby, you know, and I think uh, Jordan saw um, some posts that he put on social media and reached out to him. And, you know, uh, playing in that two level um, is something that he's, you know, done in not too uh, recent, well, in some more recent times. Because um, I know he was playing with Henley, we played against him um, <laughs> then, and um, he actually is really good um, uh, buddies from uni with some of the guys that um, are in our squad as well. So um, it, it, I think it was going to really nice. Um, sort of gesture for us to be able to offer him the opportunity to keep playing at a relatively decent level of rugby compared to what he's used to, all the while hoping that he'll get a new opportunity perhaps somewhere um, at a club in the UK. Um, but it means that he gets to continue playing, it means that he's still part of a, of a club and a community and something that I think um, he was really passionate about continuing um, when everything unfortunately unfolded in Jersey. I remember just when we found out the news about Jersey and uh, my first reaction was just how, how incredibly sad it was for the players, the staff, um, you know, because I don't want to get too much detail in it, but there's things happen above people's pay grades, you don't know what's going on, and then suddenly you don't have a job. It's, it's incredibly sad, and I, I know what it, how much it would affect me if it happened to myself, because I've got a, a young family as well. We did reach out to Dan, and um, he was talking about struggling to, to, to make ends meet, and, and decide to reach out and help him out and look at the same time we benefit because we needed a centre as well but he's he slotted in really well because he knows a lot of our players um, from university which has been great but I think as a whole like look I'm not a huge fan of Worcester or Wasps you know they're one of our I'm a Harlequin supporter so they're big rivals but when they went bust a, a small piece of the diet doesn't it because it's, it's a part of our game that, that keeps on going away and there's something wrong with our game at the moment and that's happening so for me, the fact that we, were, we are rivals with Jersey, it's obsolete when it comes to something like this. We've got to be looking to help each other. That warm and welcoming aspect of Guernsey is also recognised by visiting teams, including Barnes, who added to the 850 strong crowd for their recent fixture against the Raiders. I think look, part, of, part of the thing for us is, is getting away and supporting our team. And sometimes when it's a local game, yes, we'll go and support it. But it has a bit of a mini tour about it. So a group of us come over like to have come over a couple of days ago obviously the weather stopped that but it's great to come over here support the team and and Guernsey we've always had a great rivalry with over the last uh, 12 odd years and the games have been uh, very very close a couple of points in it all the time so it's the game that uh, that has a certain amount of tension about it which uh, wherever we are in the league whether we've been at the bottom or near the top either side it's always been a close one this is my third third visit to the island here um it's been um eventful each time um, I'm the chairman of the club now, so I'm trying to behave a little bit better than I have in the past. We, it, we, we, it's, 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 we're in a local hotel, we can walk to the ground, we make it a special occasion for ourselves. And it's, it, it's not just coming to Guernsey, it's a treat for ourselves as, the, as the, the seniors in the club to come over and have a good time over here. We as a club certainly love them. Um, last year, we unfortunately came in the holiday season, so we didn't, uh, we didn't have a little mini tour on the back of it, but this year we certainly... Um, you know we're going to have a nice um, night out tonight and stuff, but fundamentally we're here to we're here to play rugby and we're here to try and get five league points. That's that's the first and foremost most important thing. Um, you know Guernsey have got a very proud home record. Uh, I'll put this up there with one of the toughest two or three places in the league to come and win. So you know we're very fortunate that our committee allow us to come and prepare well and come over for 48 hours, but everyone else isn't in that same position. So. Yeah, it's certainly um, a great trip for, and a lot of the boys today haven't done the overnighter element to it. So, um, you know, but first and foremost, we've got a job to do. That's the most important thing. You know, playing National League rugby can be pretty grim at times. Um, there's not many enjoyable uh, kind of places to go. Um, but I guess that's the whole point. That's what teams try to do to you as an away team. Um, this is definitely a highlight for us. It's, it's really nice to be able to have like a mid-season weekend away with the guys. Um, Guernsey is a great place. I mean, you know, the hotel we're in is fantastic, and this pitch is always really, really nice whenever we come down. So, guys are enjoying it. They're they're hoping, obviously, that we get a win here today. But 
for us, it's 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 quite a nice little break to have mid-season to get over here. Um, and like Jack says, the club are kind enough to allow us to do that for a couple of nights, um, which not every club can do. But because we're in that position, we make the most of it. And hopefully we uh, will repay that faith from the committee with a decent result today. And Jack Heel's troops did repay that faith as they clinched a hard-fought 28-11 victory in round eight at Foots Lane. But looking at the bigger picture, we all know National League rugby has so much to offer and a trip to Guernsey Raiders is just one of the many aspects which makes levels 3 and 4 so unique. If you could say one thing about Guernsey, why you should visit Guernsey, including the rugby, what would it be? Uh, just just the island, like, it's a beautiful place, um, it's full of wonderful people, um, there's lovely coastal paths to go for a walk on, there's some great beaches that obviously this time of year maybe not so much <laughs> but in the summer are fantastic. Um, you know, for a small island, we've got a lot to offer. We've got great restaurants, um, uh, great places all around the island to explore. So, just the island itself. Honestly, it's just a beautiful island in general. Like, going down to the beaches, like, I don't know that the UK over these ways had, you know, great beaches like there. <laughs> um, we've got bathing pools, the town life is great. Like, um, whole community within the um, town is just awesome. Like, no matter where you go, because it's such a small island, everyone will... You know, recognize you, say hi, get to know each other, walking down the street, say hello. So, yeah, no, nah, I'm just buzzing to be here, mate. Oh, there's, there's loads. There's absolutely loads. Um, probably the one thing for me is, is I mean, like I said, I was from Bristol, so I think the nearest beach to me was Western Supermare. <laughs> and uh, as much as you love looking at trolleys in the in the uh, sea, it's, it's not quite as good as over here. You like, you get a five minute drive to, to absolute lovely white beaches and stuff like that and just just all around in general the views cliff cliff walks over from that it's just it's just a beautiful place um it's a really nice place to come it's very welcome and a safe place as well um and that's why i've obviously stayed here as well um but yeah there's there's plenty of plenty of reasons why to come over and obviously enjoy it and spend a weekend over here while you can i mean if you want to go to a unique place like guernsey is very unique when i first turned up here i didn't realize they don't have fast food chains <laughs> because they love their restaurants. They love it the way it is. It's very French and English at the same time. I think it's one of the most beautiful places. I came here for six months and I've been here for 17 years. That should just be a testament to how beautiful it is.